HRC, HRC, HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give glory to Ahaya Ashere Ahaya. Amen. And our Dona Yache, Messiah, and our mother Uwa Kakwadosi. We wanted to just give thanks as we're in the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We wanted to give an exhortation for the upcoming Feast of First Fruits as well. We have some requirements in the law that Ahaya has revealed the understanding in accordance with his law and his statutes and his timelines. In the law, we are not to eat bread, corn, or green ears until the day of the sheaf offering. So we don't eat rice, grain, or corn products until the sheaf offering according to the statute of Ahaya or Allahayim. Look at Leviticus 23 and 14, please. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your Elohim. And it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. All right. This comes right after eating bread and grain for a whole week for unleavened bread, right. and which we are in right now. As you know, so let's look at Leviticus 23, verse 6 to 8. Leviticus 23, verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month, it's the feast of unleavened bread unto Ahaya. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. And the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Ahaya seven days. And the seventh day is in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. And that's today, the day we are in. That's the right. last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Ahai has been gracious to reveal the true day of the Feast of First Fruits so that we may know the day of the sheaf offering. He's shown that the 16th day of the third month is the Feast of First Fruits. The day of the sheaf offering, which is 50 days prior to that first fruits, is actually the 27th day of the first month. When we may eat rice, grain, and corn products because it's the day of the sheaf offering according to the statute. When you count 50 days according to the law, from the 27th of the first month, it will bring you to the 16th of the third month, which is the day of the Feast of First Fruits. Let's read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 14 to 21. Please. Leviticus 23, verse 14. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your Elohim. And it shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Shabbatah, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Shabbatahs shall be complete. Now, that verse right there is what has left a lot of confusion right. because there are some who start counting the 50 days from right, right after, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. And we praise Ahaya that precepts, through precepts we get understanding and we're going to see that the Feast of First Fruits was already revealed in the Book of Jubilees. Right. And it's amazing because that's the book of the times. Right. To understand the times of Ahaya Alayim. It's interesting. The only way you can know when to wave the sheaf offering is if you are a gardener in the Middle East. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Ahaya is gracious that he gave us the Hebrew records <laughs> right. to know what his appointed times are. As we're going to see together here as we continue. Uh, let's continue, please. Verse 16. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Shabbatah shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto Ahiah. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be in holy convocation unto you, 
You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. So we see how we're keeping the feast of first fruits when it comes. On the 16th day of the third month, according to the Holy Calendar, and we invite you to as well by going on the website, downloading the calendar, so you can also keep it with the feast days and celebrate them with us. So in continuing, the day of the sheaf offering is key to identifying which day the first fruits is really on. So it's essential to get in sync with Ahaya's heavenly times. Now let's look at the precepts for first fruits to confirm the true date. Jubilees chapter 6, verse 16 to 22. Jubilees chapter 6, verse 16. And he set his bow in the cloud for a sign for the eternal covenant, that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy it all the days of the earth. And this is the times of Genesis chapter 8 and chapter 9, I believe, when he set his bow in the cloud. Yes, chapter 9. Oh, thank you, chapter 9. For this reason it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month for once a year. To renew the covenant every year. So this feast is written on the heavenly tablets. This is set. It doesn't change. <laughs> right? Continue. And this whole festival was celebrated in the heaven from the day of creation to the days of Noachah. 26 jubilees and five weeks of years. And Noachah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years till the days of Noachah's death. And from the day of Noachah's death, his sons did away with it until the days of Abraham, and they ate blood. But Abraham observed it in Ithichakwa and Jacob, right. and his children observed it up to thy days. And in his days, so this was after all the 12 patriarchs had died in Egypt, right. they stopped keeping the feast of first. Place. And this is Moses that they right. talking to. Right, right. And in thy days, the children of Israel forgot it until ye celebrated it anew on this mountain. That was the key part. He said, you're celebrating anew on this mountain. So we have to look and see what day did Moses go on the mountain? Let's look at Jubilees chapter 1 verse 1 to see what day it was that Moses was on the mountain. And it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt, in the third month, on the sixteenth day of the month, that Elohim spake to Mushi, saying, Come up to me on the mount, and I will give thee two tables of stone of the law and of the commandment, which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. The sixteenth day of the third month is the day of the Feast of First Fruits. Right. The true day of the feast was the very day Moses went up into the mountain. And in Exodus, Moses kept telling Pharaoh that there was a feast that was to be held. And now we understand what feast it was. And Moses was telling the Ahia, said, let my people go so they can come keep first fruits. <laughs> and which we did get to keep because we, we arrived there and it got celebrated anew on the 16th day of the third month. Now you can also see that Abraham kept the feast as well, just as the scripture says. Jubilees 15. Jubilees chapter 15, verse 1. And in the fifth year, the fourth week of this jubilee, in the third month, in the middle of the month, mm -hmm. Abram celebrated the feast of the first fruits of the grain harvest. Since the feast is on the 16th of the third month, we must do as the law requires, and the law still stands until heaven and earth pass. So no rice, grain, or corn products. After the sundown tonight, after the Feast of Unleavened Bread is complete, until it's the 27th day of the first month, the day that they would have offered the sheaf offering, so that we may be in line with Ahaya Alahayum's heavenly ordinances. And we would count the 50 days to get to the Feast of First Fruits on the 16th of the third month, as it is engraved on the heavenly tablets, and as it has been kept <laughs> from the creation. That's right. That's all. All right. Good. Chalam. Chalam. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.